it seems to be a very uh, complicated, boring issue, but it's not. And uh, I would like to, to tell you what was the starting point of this. You know that the initiative reports are reports this parliament uh, decides to draft on a topic on which uh, the commission has not already produced anything, or n not yet. And um, the starting point was that we cannot answer, after five years in ECON, uh, in the last mandate, where we made several, we adopted several uh, regulations uh, to, to frame the financial uh, activity, to uh, draw the conclusions of the crisis, I was not in the position to answer to my voters who is deciding. Who decides where the rules are coming from? Who is really taking a decision? Is there somewhere, someone? Uh, is it a parliament? Uh, is it the financial industry itself, etc., that is framing the activity? So we decided to look at a broad field of institutions, international organizations, private bodies that are all dealing with these matters. Of course, it's a little bit in French, we would say c'est un inventaire à la Prévert, uh, because of a poetry of Jacques Prévert mixing many things. But actually, on, on some issues, you have uh, let's say the IMF or the OCDE, they are fully-fledged international organizations. At least you can read the treaty. You know that the treaty founding this, this uh, organization uh, one day uh, has been ratified, etc. But if you take IOSCO for markets, if you take the Basel Committee, which is part of the International Bank of Settlement, uh, it is a completely different status. So you observe that you have several bodies based on very di diverse governances with sometimes uh, some member states of the European Union represented, sometimes all the member states, uh, where you have sometimes only the Western world, more or less in the OCDE, even if now they work with others. Or you have the FSB, which is an under uh, body of the, the G20, but the G20 itself is not very democratic because you have so many countries in the world not part of the G20, etc. Et so you, you discover that actually this is a field. If you take all the, the questions dealing with finance, market, uh, banks, insurance, uh, accounting standards, uh, that, and, and even tax, because OCDE has lot, done a lot of work on taxes and taxation, tax evasion, you don't understand how we, all, we have organized ourselves. Of course, it's perfectly normal because it is a, the, the consequence of decades of work, uh, step by step, uh, in different formats. But, and here, it, I come back to Trump, if I may. The feeling of, of many citizens in the world, not only in the European Union, is that, even in democracies, is that they don't choose the people deciding at the end. The ownership of the system, the way they look at it from the ground, it is, and, and it is not, and we should stop self-flagellating the European Union. It is not only a problem of European Union. It exists at the European level. The European Union is probably one level more, but it is true also for the national level, it is also true for the global level. On many issues, the public opinion does not understand the conditions under which it lives. Being sometimes of very negative, for example, many people tell me I'm against finance, and then I ask them, do you have a car? Yes. Do you have an insurance for your car? Yes. Okay, you so you use finance. And they don't make the link between the fact that they have an insurance contract for their car and the fact that finance under certain circumstances is useful. Or people complain at the same time that we do not invest enough in our economy, that there is not, not enough growth, and they consider finance as a, an enemy. So um, that was the starting point. And once again, I'm quite sure that we should go to the roots of this 
uh, perception in the public opinion, because when you take the time to look at the roots, then you understand better that some people ask also good reasons. I don't want to blame the people voting for the populists. They are sometimes abused by their, the way they use the frustration. But there is also something. I don't know if you have seen the film Money Monster, but if you've seen Money Monster, it's a good example on how people can be frustrated and because they don't understand why they have lost their money, then they become violent, etc. I'm not saying that the violence is legitimate, but if we don't tackle the issues uh, early enough, uh, and we are right now in this phase in our society. So the, the, the people from the moderate party should take all these issues seriously. So you can look at the, the report, you can look at all the technical details. I would just insist on two things. We wanted to improve, and here I'm very interested in the reaction of someone from the commission. We discussed with uh, Commissioner Dombrovskis. I had chats with, with uh, Lord Hill when he was there. I hope the commission can at least take some of the proposals and, and, and improve things. We wanted to improve transparency. The first thing you can do when the system is very complicated is at least to be transparent, to get the information on time, uh, that the people representing the European Union, let's say at the FSB or at the Basel Committee or uh, in all these bodies, take the, the, the habit to, to go in front of, let's say, this parliament, national parliament, etc. That there is some dialogue and that the people explain what they are doing, not a black box. And this is not something that requires big, I, I give you an example for the first time we had the head of the Basel Committee in the Econ Committee some uh, weeks ago. They play a very important role because they, de they, de they declare it is, it is a global body dealing with banking issues and on capital requirements for banks. I take a very concrete example. In the legislation, the European legislation, the parliament introduced specific rules in order to uh, allow banks to, uh, to finance SMEs. In Europe, you have the, 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 the economy is financed through banking intermediation, much more than in the US where the companies go directly to the markets. This is a matter of fact. If you apply exactly the same rules in the US and in Europe, and if, if you reduce the capacity of the banks for lending, for very good reason to lend, even for very good reasons like uh, let's take less risk, etc., then the impact on growth will be bigger in Europe. So we have to be able to discuss. It is perfectly normal that an independent committee of experts check if our rules are compliant with the commitments we have taken at the global level, but we should not take stupid commitments. If the situation is very different, we sh should make sure that we reach the objective, which is to stabilize the financial sector and the banking sector, but not to impinge on the, on, on, on the growth. So transparency is key, transparency in the procedures, and also transparency in the financing and the way all these bodies function. Some of these bodies include industry representatives and are financed also by industry. We should simply know where the money is coming from. I'm, I'm a liberal, I have nothing against private bodies if they do their job properly, but at least the public opinion has to know they are not public bodies. In, uh, entitled to defend uh, public goods, but they are private bodies in which the industry might have an interference. And we should know who, who is paying, what the amounts are. If you take the very tricky issues of um, accounting standards, it's not neutral. Then on the accountability, being member of this house, uh, I must say we have not found the solution, but the principles that the people who take the decision should be accountable is important. So let's try to work in order to be sure that the representatives of the, of the commission, for example, going uh, in these bodies uh, have a mandate, that we can discuss the mandate, or at least know the mandate, discuss with the council. I must say that on this report I had, and I will stop here, I had very positive reactions, at least on the principle. I think there is a certain consensus, be it in the ECB, be it in the National Central Bank, in the commission, in the council, to say, well, the way we work right now is not completely satisfactory. So I hope 
uh, we can at least improve a little bit, I mean, which would require from the ECB when it goes to Basel to explain a little bit more, maybe when the president comes in front of Econ, we can ask questions on that, that your commissioner is also including this in his attitude, that we might organize everywhere, maybe every year in the parliament a session or something where we can deal with these issues, st take stock of where we are in some bodies. The scope of the study was quite broad, and I want to thank again the members of the Secretariat who helped and uh, external experts. And that's also the reason why, for me, it was very important that this small event can take place and that we can discuss with, because my experience in this house is that very often we adopt rules and then we don't care about the advocacy. We don't make the link with the, the public opinion, with the industry, with the citizens, and also with the bodies inside the system that should help us to, to improve. It, it was just a first attempt to, to uh, draw the attention on an issue. We don't pretend at all that we found a solution. I'm proud that we had a very broad majority of the four main uh, pro-European political groups, uh, EPP, SND, Greens, and, and, and ALDE. Uh, and um, in any case, I was, I was really uh, happy that it can take place. So do not hesitate to ask, do not hesitate to make comments. It's just the willingness to, uh, to rebuild the link with uh, the society and to try to explain better where we are. My only, the only thing, I'm, I'm, I'm very modest on the results. The only thing I really believe is that we'll, we'll never stop globalization will not happen. The national structures are, uh, to a certain extent, obsolete, at least if you really pretend, for example, to have a free movement of capital worldwide and the level playing field worldwide. Then you have to rebuild something at the appropriate level to put democracy, accountability, transparency at the level where you are supposed to decide. If we don't accept the starting point, the we will be always in, in a kind of contradiction between what we pretend to offer through national democracies and what we have to deliver. So you have the choice for your children. Do you prefer structures or do you prefer decisions and people who can deliver? If you want solutions on climate, on finance, on whatever, then it is clear that we have to rethink the global governance. It is a huge issue, and it will not disappear very soon, whatever you say to, we say today. Thank you. Thank you.